Hey everybody. For many years now we've been we've been spoiled by the USB port or the USB cable. The one size fits all device that you'll find on many different kinds of devices such as flash sticks, memory card readers, webcams, you plug your smartphone into it, and it just all sorts of different stuff. And of course you're looking at a webcam that is from roughly 2006 and it is a USB webcam. And I imagine some of you guys watching this video are not really old enough to, to know the times before USB was around, before things were so simple. So yeah, you know, with, with webcams like this, it's usually just as simple as plugging it into a USB port. Available okay, USB port on your computer. Which you just plug it in. And launching. Some sort of video capture software. And you can see. Bingo, there we go. We have a video feed. And this, again, as I mentioned, well, I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but um, even in 2006, this is a rather cheap webcam. It's only like a 640 by 480, I think. Um, it was like $16 at Walmart back in 2006 or 2007. Not that great, I must say. Um, but it is a webcam. And it's simple. You just plug it into a USB port and with maybe a little bit of configuration, bam, you have a working webcam and you can actually chat with people and stuff. Well, things weren't always this easy. Now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. Because um, I got a little something to show you. As mentioned, things were not always this simple where you just simply have a USB port available on your computer to plug things into. The USB port has only been around it's only been common since like 1998. It was introduced I think in 96 um, and it wasn't really common until it, you didn't find it on actually on computers often until about 98 to 2000. So. Back in those days, webcams were not nearly as simple. Introducing the Avermedia Intercam. This is a webcam that was introduced during the time that USB was not very common. It has a date on the back of 1998. It's a copyright date, 1998. And let's just go ahead and have a look at what this thing has to offer. It mentions faster speed over PCI bus, higher resolution, true to 640 by 480, superior desktop camera quality, complete video conferencing kit. It includes desktop camera, PCI capture board, microphone, and software. Bundle with Microsoft NetMeeting, NetShow, Internet Explorer, and Stefra's video control software. On the back, if you just want to read that, feel free to pause. Now I must mention that um, this thing has been opened before. I don't know if it's ever been used before, although it's not factory sealed. But inside we have a desktop microphone, which is, I'd say, pretty relevant today. We could actually reuse that. We have the webcam, which of course does not use USB, but rather composite. It has the composite cable and a power cable. It 
So it appears it may have been used before. It has these little Velcro things. One side is the adhesive, which has definitely been used, and it's not real sticky anymore. But what they would do is, you know, what you would do is you would take these off, stick them to your monitor. You know, or literally speaking, you know, back in the day we had CRT monitors. You stick them on there, and then you'd stick this to the top. And here we have, I believe, what's called a DIN connector. And this little guy here can be used to feed power in, or you can actually power this device off of the PCI card. Let's go ahead and have a look at the PCI card. There is our main chip. It's a video decoder. Here's a good close look at if you want to look up any of these numbers. Look at the back side. Has a serial number. And here are the connectors on the side. It includes power, composite video, and S video. Now, here comes some interesting stuff. We're going to see if this thing still works. Um, also, we had this <laughs> RMA request form. That you would fill out and send in if needed. So what we're going to do is we're going to install this card onto the Plexi and see if we can get this thing to work. Now the Plexi is running a 32-bit version of Windows 10 so I would assume that our chances of getting a working driver will be a little higher. I'm just going to shut everything down. And we'll go ahead and swap this out. See if I can get this thing to work. One of the nice things about the Plexi is the ease of access. Just switch off the main power supply, grab our screwdriver, and we'll go ahead and install this card. Now in theory, if this card works, you could use it to, um, you could just use it as a um, composite capture card for any other device you may have that feeds in composite, such as, such as let's say a VCR. Let's go and start the computer and see how this thing does. The first obstacle will be, again, drivers. I haven't mentioned it already.
while this is loading up, also note that the webcam has a little button on the back, which I imagine might be for power. We'll find out in a moment. I tell you, this is an interesting little piece of um, equipment here for the time, anyway. Because you know, back in back in the days around this <laughs> time of this device, um, the most common internet really was dial-up. So you imagine trying to feed video across a dial-up connection, and even 640x480 would be it'd be um, painful, I should say. So while this thing could do 640x480, I'd imagine that the way it transfers would be very, would probably much lower than that, and probably the frame rate would be the frame rate would be really low. So let's first go into Device Manager. and see if this thing has a driver. No, it does not. Okay, everybody, I was not able to find a fully compatible driver for this capture card. So what it is, I installed a known working capture card alongside this other capture card since that capture card includes the 5 volt power supply for this camera. Now we can actually demonstrate the camera. <laughs> so, here's the camera. On the side we have a little power button. And there's a little indicator to tell you that it's on. And launch our video capture software. Get you a look at the camera. And it is functional. Definitely out of focus. <laughs> um, but what it does offer, I'm going to get this keyboard out of the way. Free up some space here. So, yeah, it does work. It's just, it um, of course requires a composite capture feed because it's not USB. But um, we can focus it by twisting this right here. It's if you watched my um, this, if you watched the video that I posted not too long ago about the Z8 lens, this is very similar to it. It, it twists to focus. Not sure if we're doing. Okay, so we're actually doing. Way to infinity there. And this way is, I think, macro. Heck, I'm not really even sure. Actually, no, I think it's backwards. I got it backwards. See, so now you can see it's focusing in on the dual camera signage on my Zacti. I guess not too bad <laughs> for a camera for a little camera this old. Now along this just for the heck of it, um, let's plug in this other webcam. Now unfortunately I won't be able to do them. I don't think I'll be able to do them side by side. However, I'll, let me see what I can do. So plug this into a USB port. And we should be able to select the device. Okay, so here is the Logitech Quick Cam Chat. You see the um, video is somewhat smoother. However, there is a lot of jumpiness to it. You got that wonderful effect there. Okay, I won't make you sick. <laughs> so. This one, very similar. You can twist to focus it. 
had I known this 10 years ago, I probably could have got some better video with it, but this is pretty terrible already as it is. Okay, so I'm going to try to hold these side by side and we'll can just toggle back and forth between the two. Okay, it's going to focus this one. You know what, guys? I think this old camera from 1998 is actually <laughs> it is actually doing better than, well, to an extent, better than the um, cheap Logitech USB camera. I think the video is quite clear for a camera this age. It's not... Now you can see it does kind of tend to tear a little bit there, but it's not... Here we go again. It's... Let's just say, for example, let's go back to the USB camera. You can see how there's a lot of dropouts when panning around and this one here looks more like a smear. So, <laughs> I think this old Avermedia, Avermedia camera, although it's not a USB camera, it's the video quality is actually pretty good. Yeah, I'm considering this the age of this device, it's from the time that USB was first coming out, and digital cameras, well, most of their photos were. Um, back then were usually 640 by 480. Some of them were 1024 by 768. But yeah, <laughs> so not too bad actually. Anyways, I think that kind of wraps up for this video. That is a look at a 1990s webcam from the back from the times when USB was not very common, and we had to resort to using the composite video. So not, definitely not a bad little device. Hope you guys enjoyed the little tour of it and demonstration of it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Well guys, that's it for this one. But it doesn't have to be. There's plenty more videos on the channel to check out. Also, if you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you absolutely hated it, there is the alternative button as well. But yeah, please subscribe to the channel. I definitely appreciate it. And remember to click the bell so that we get notified of all updates. Also, if you're interested in things aside from computers and technology, check out my second channel. It's CubeCompMTDX. Over there you'll find videos about weather, elevators, bicycling, and pretty much whatever else I figure out how to upload. So yeah, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And thank you for your support.